the composition of Lee Renavis. The outbreak of war had given Young a completely new understanding of his fantasies. In Lee Renavis, he wrote, and then the war broke out. This opened my eyes about what I had experienced before, and it also gave me the courage to say all of that which I had written in the earlier parts of this book. A critical part of this shift was that he no longer viewed his fantasies as purely personal. In Lee Renavis, he wrote, commenting on an entry of May 23rd, 1914, I wanted to understand it all as personal experiences within me, and consequently, I could neither understand nor believe it all, since my belief was weak. It is likely at, that at this stage, he reread the entries of November 12, 1913 through July 21st, 1914, in books two through four. He now conceived of the idea of a work exploring the correspondence between his fantasies and what was taking place in the world at literal and symbolic levels. This was to become Lever Novice. He transcribed and edited most of the entries from books two to four covering November 12, 1913 through April 19, 1914. In the main, he tended to omit materials that depicted his emotional states. He reproduced the fantasies faithfully while omitting the dates. The sequence of Lever Novice nearly always corresponds exactly to that of the Black Books. Jung maintained a fidelity to the event. What he was writing was not to be mistaken as fiction, and at the same time he closely copy edited the fantasies, making a number of small revisions. The changes served to clarify matters at certain junctures and present a smoother sequence and they also made the material less personally revealing. The main difference between the Black Books and Lever Novice is that the former were written for Jung's personal use and can be considered the records of an experiment, while the latter was addressed to a public and presented in a form to be read by others. The revisions to the material mark the passage from personal notebook to public work. Dated entries became chapters. A sizable share of Jung's confrontations with the unconscious actually consisted of his transcription of an editorial work on and copy editing of his own material. In this edition, most of the significant changes have been noted, which enables the reader to follow Jung as editor of his own material. In Lever Novice, to each of the entries Jung produced, he added a section explaining the significance of the episode combined with the lyrical elaboration. He arranged the work into a series of chapters. For the most part, the chapters corresponding to individual entries. The draft begins with the address, my friends, a reoccurring phrase. In November 1914, Jung closely studied Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra, from which he had first read in his youth. He later recalled that then suddenly the spirit seized me and carried me to a desert country in which I read Zarathustra. It strongly shaped the structure and style of Lever Novice. Like Nietzsche and Zarathustra, Young divided the material up into a series of books comprised of short chapters. But whereas Zarathustra proclaims the death of God, Lever Novice depicts the rebirth of God in the soul. There are also indications that Jung read Dante's Commedia, which also informs the structure of the work. Lever Novice depicts Jung's descent into hell, but whereas Dante could utilize an established cosmology, Lever Novice is an attempt to shape an individual cosmology. The role of Philemon in Jung's work has analogies to that of Zarathustra. In Nietzsche's work and Virgil's and Dante's. In the draft, about 50% of the material is drawn directly from the black books. There are approximately 35 new sections of lyrical elaboration and commentary. Here, Jung was the exegete of his own imaginal visions. He attempted to derive general psychological principles from his fantasies and to understand to what extent the events portrayed in them presented in symbolic form developments that were to occur in the world. 
1914, he had introduced the distinction between interpretations on the objective level in which dreamed objects were treated as representations of real objects and interpretation on the subjective level in which every element concerns the dreamers themselves. As well as interpreting his fantasies on the subjective level, one could characterize his procedure here as an effort to interpret his fantasies on the collective level. He does not t try to interpret his fantasies reductively, but rather as depicting the functioning of general psychological principles in him, such as the relation of introversion to extroversion, thinking and pleasure, and so forth, and as depicting literal or symbolic events that are going to happen. Thus, the second layer of the draft represents the first major and extended development and application of his new constructive method. It is itself a hermeneutic experiment. It provides an interpretive reading of the entries in the black books in the concentrated five-month period beginning in 1913 of November. This work of understanding encompassed a number of interlinked, interlinked threads Jung wanted to understand himself and to integrate and develop the various components of his personality, to understand the structure of the human personality in general and in the relation of the individual to present day society and to the community of the dead, to fathom the psychological and historical effects of Christianity and to grasp the future religious developments of the West. He discussed many other themes, including the nature of self-knowledge, the nature of the soul, the relation of thinking and feeling in the psychological types, the relation of inner and outer masculinity and femininity, and the uniting of opposites. He also treated solitude, the value of scholarship and learning, the status of science, the significance of symbols and how they are un to be understood, and the meaning of the war. He touched on madness, divine madness, and psychiatry, how the imitation of Christ is to be understood today, the death of God, the historical significance of Nietzsche, and the relation of magic and reason. The overall theme of Libra Novice is how Jung regains his soul and overcomes the contemporary malaise of spiritual alienation. This is ultimately achieved through enabling the rebirth of a new image of God in his soul and developing him a new worldview in the form of a psychological and theogenic cosmology. The Renavis presents the prototype of Jung's conception of the individuation process, which he held to be the universal form of individual psychological development. Thus, the work itself can be understood on the one hand as Jung's depicting individuation process, and on the other as his elaboration of this concept as a general psychological schema. At the beginning of the book, he refines his soul and embarks on a sequence of fantasy adventures, which are linked to the form of consecutive narrative. He realized that until then, he had served the spirits of the time, characterized by use and value. In addition to this, there existed a spirit of the depths, which led to the things of the soul. In terms of Jung's later biographical memoir, the spirit of the times corresponds to the personality number one, and the spirit of the depths corresponds to personality number two. Hence, this period may be seen as a return to the values of personality number two. The entries of the black books, now recast as chapters, follow a particular format. They begin with the exposition of dramatic visual fantasies. In them, Jung's eye encounters a series of figures in various settings and enters in conversation with them. He is confronted with unexpected happenings and shocking statements. He then attempts to understand what transpired and to formulate the significance of these events and statements into general psychological conceptions and maxims. Jung held that the significance of these fantasies was that they stemmed from the mythopoetic imagination mythopoic imagination which was missing in the present rational age 
The task of individuation lay in establishing a dialogue with the fantasy figures or the contents of the collective unconscious and integrating them into consciousness, hence recovering the value of the mythopoic imagination which had been lost to the modern age. Through this, the spirit of the times would be reconciled with the spirit of the depths. This task was to form a late motif of his subsequent scholarly work. After completing the handwritten draft, Jung had typed it and edited it. On one manuscript, he had alterations by hand from the annotations on the corrected draft, it appears that he gave this to someone to read. The reader commented on Jung's editing, indicating that some sections that he had intended to cut should be retained. Sometime in 1915, Jung decided to retranscribe the transcript of Libra Novus in the form of a medieval illuminated manuscript in calligraphy script from parchment. He titled the first book The Way of What Is to Come and placed beneath the title some citations from the book of Isaiah and from the gospel according to John. Thus the text was presented as a prophetic work he completed the transcription of the first section of the work, effectively leaving the premise on parchment. Initially, and throughout this section, the paintings and historical historiated initials represent, represented scenes from the fantasies, possibly for technical reasons. The parchment page shows a lot of bleeding through. He now continued to transcribe and illustrate the work in a large folio volume of much more than 600 pages, bound in red leather from the bookbinders Emil Sturilli. The spine bears the title Libra Novice, New Book. He inserted the parchment pages into the folio volume which continues with Libra Secundus. In the course of the transcription into the folio volume, he altered some of the titles to the chapters, added others, and edited the material once again. The cuts and alterations were predominantly to the second layer of interpretation and elaboration. The entries and fantasies reproduced in Libra Novus are confined to a condensed period of time. In certain regards, Jung's commentary in the second layer reflects his understanding of the changes that happened to him in the period as a whole, rather than only referring to the fantasies in question. A reading of the material later featured in Libra Novus, as it originally unfolded in the Black Books, enables us to see and to follow the phenomenology of Jung's experiences during the course of his self-experimentation.